This is the General Grievous from Martin Lego Design over on Rebrickable and Instagram. And unfortunately, he's too tall for my filming display, so you can see the corners out there, but we'll zoom in and get some better shots in a second. But I just wanted to get you guys an idea of the full figure and all of its glory standing up. Um, and I think it looks incredible like this. I'm so happy to have this in my collection. I think it looks really cool posed up on my shelves. And I think it's one of the most interesting mocks that I've seen and that I've actually got the pleasure to build. Now, I'd say this cost me about $45 to build. However, there were a few things that I swapped. So there are some expensive pieces in this I'll talk about in a second that I swapped out. And then there were some problems with the actual parts list which I will also discuss and so overall with those issues it was actually 55 or so and then I actually made my own stand so if you were building it com completely as he designed it with his stand and all it would probably cost you about $65 give or take. Alright so let's get some closer looks at this actual build. This was about 400 pieces for the build itself. The rest of the pieces go into the stand. And a bulk of those pieces do actually go into this chest. So we have this green windshield piece, which has croissants and Batgirl's hair. There's also some for his throat. And those are his biological components in this cyborg. And I think they look incredible. I really love how they turned out. These rib pieces are using bionicle claws and they're very hard to kind of get in a position where they're even. They look really great kind of covering up his chest. They don't come out and around it as far as I'd like to see, but for the most part, it looks pretty great. Um, I think the chest is by far the strongest aspect of this model and I absolutely love all of the details on the inside. This area around here is a little bit plain and a little bit lacking, but I'll get to that more when we cover the legs. For now, let's just make our way up the model and take a closer look at the neck. So moving the head out of the way will reveal that and the neck is with these, which are utilized a lot in this build. These are modified round bricks with axle connectors on each side. And then there's some claw pieces on each side of the neck, which will kind of act as just a little more detailing and I think look really good in there. And so with that, it comes together to create a good looking neck. And of course these windshield pieces in tan make an excellent collarbone. I really love that. I think this whole neck area is my favorite part of this model. What's not my favorite part of this model is the actual neck itself because the only point of articulation is that ball up there, which as you can see, he can look significantly downward all the way into his actual collarbones. He can look a decent amount to the side. I'd like to see a lot more than just that. As you can see, same on the other side. I do like being able to see the neck under there if he is looking at the side. And personally, I do have him displayed at an angle so he's looking at you and I think it looks a lot more dynamic. And then of course he can look as much up as I think you'd like to see and he can and he can move anywhere in that radius. However, because this is the only point of articulation, you can't bring the head out. And one of the key things about General Grievous is his posture, which is very humpback. And I don't think that this gets the arch in his back completely right. I think it is a little bit too stiff and I think the head should be out a little farther and down just a little bit. But you can get some good looking poses out of this, and I think that the head has enough articulation, not quite as much as I'd like to see, but definitely enough. Now, if you were wondering, this head is actual Lego. It is from Lego's buildable character line, and it's got incredible print detailing, and it looks absolutely beautiful. This is what the rest of the model was scaled from, so because there's only this one head. It would either have to be brick built or to use this, the rest has to be scaled to it. However, I think that it is a little bit overscaled compared to the head. I think the head is a little bit small for the body and it's not that noticeable, but I'll come to show you other parts of it that kind of make it look a little bit disproportionate as well. I think the head is not the worst part of the proportions. Of course, it came in tan, so the rest of the model had to be in tan rather than white, which I prefer a tan General Grievous anyway. On the back of the torso, we have a couple issues, I'd say. They're not big problems, but, but I don't really like how these back panels leave so much hollow emptiness inside. 
Um, I think that it should have been covered up a little more, and I think that this top part is a little lacking in design and doesn't really look like General Grievous back. But I do love this Bionicle projectile launcher piece used as the spine. I think that gives it a perfect curve and really like how that looks. I kind of wish it wasn't so hidden in there. As you move up to the head and neck piece, you can see it's on a ball, and this is one of my problems is that he has the wrong length of axle in the instructions. So I got too long of these axle pins and I had to supplement brown ones from my own collection. It'll actually be gray if you buy the right ones. One of General Grievous' most iconic aspects has to be that he has four arms. And I think the designer did a really good job capturing that. Of course, we have the shin pieces from the buildable characters as the shoulders and they are very poseable, so they can be moved on in a lot of different angles. However, because it's on these angled bricks, it puts the arm at a right angle when you lift it all the way up. It's on a Mixel's ball joint with the axle, and so you can't get the arms any higher than this, which is kind of, kind of a shame. Um, it would be really nice to be able to have his arms at a higher angle so that he could be triple wielding as it stands if you do want to get a good pose um, maybe he's holding his lightsaber like this and down here he's holding his second lightsaber you can get him to be holding all four of them and look decently good however i think this arm just doesn't go high enough on this character now of course you don't see any lightsabers the designer didn't make any lightsabers for this character but using general grievous from the actual buildable figure line you could use that same design for his lightsabers and add them onto this, and I think they'd be in a decent scale. So if you did desire to do that, it is possible. You'd have to remodify the hands, though, to actually hold them because the hands, or the palms, rather, only have a single stud for a connection, and so you'd have to modify it a little bit. The fingers are battle droid heads, which I think is a very interesting and very cool technique. However, these contribute to most of the cost. These are about a dollar, maybe a dollar twenty-five each if you buy them in bulk. And so needing eight of them is just a lot. And so I only have four actually on this guy because I just didn't feel like it was necessary to have them all because this hand without them looks just fine being in the background and it's not really obvious. I think the battle droid heads as fingers also might make the arms a little bit too long unless they're curled in because they just look a little disproportionate with the rest of the body being able to reach down past the knee. However, they do look really good. I do wish it had a thumb, but it does not, unfortunately. The hand can rotate, the hand can swivel inwards and outwards, all the fingers can move, and this bar can also twist, but it's very tight in there, so you have to put it in at the angle you want it. But I think that the hand has great range of motion. Unfortunately, it does not move up and down, which is something I wish it could have. But the, but the elbow does compensate that with a literally 360 degrees range of motion. It's pretty much not possible not to be able to find a pose that works with it. So the elbow is one of the best parts of this. It can even hyperextend backwards if you want it to. And it has a bionicle claw piece there to kind of have some greebling details. Now, of course, you'd be wondering if you can connect the arms, and to do that, you'll have to take that piece off, and then you can connect them. However, when you do, the hands do get in the way and splay it like that, putting unnecessary strain on the bricks. I don't think you can realistically connect them without modifying it quite a bit. You'd probably want to take off this hand, and I don't know, it looks very thick, very blocky, and when you do that, the elbow on the bottom is not long enough, so if you do want to pose it, it's not going to connect up to there to the joint. And I think that it does look really good with four arms, much better than with just two. So I don't really see it as that much of a negative. I do really like the four armed look, but let's move on to something I don't like. And this isn't with the build as much as it is with the instructions and part list. So the instructions don't have pictures and renders for how to attach the shoulder, which is very obvious, so you, you don't actually need it, but they just don't exist, I guess. I, it, I'm not sure exactly why or what's going on. So he just tells you what part has to go on the shoulder. It's fine, that's not a big deal. What is a big deal is the parts list has multiple problems with ordering the right parts 
And so firstly, we have this little piece, this Technic piece, just a piece of bicep armor plating, and there are supposed to be six of them. Two on each arm and two on the back. So that's a total of six wrapped around. However, the parts list only has you order two. And unless you look through the instructions and double check the whole parts list before you buy it, you're gonna have to make a second purchase. So if you do buy this, please buy six of these pieces. Now, the second thing, Martin Lego on Rebrickable, in his pictures, he has physical pictures of this product for when you're buying the instructions. And in his physical pictures, it does not include armor on these back arms. So I decided just to buy four of them. It was significantly cheaper than having to buy another one from another store because most stores don't have bulk of this singular piece. And so I did end up leaving these ones off and I think it looks pretty much fine because you're not really going to see it when it's on display. You're only going to see those front arms because of how thick and bulky they are with the shoulder armor and these bicep armors. So honestly, I didn't really mind just like I didn't mind not having the droid fingers. They're just there to show that this is General Grievous, the cyborg general with four arms, and I think it's fine. However, if you do want it to be complete, that is something that was definitely kind of annoying having to make another purchase on top of what I already thought was the complete build. However, that's pretty much this whole upper design. Now let's move down to where this model falls apart, both figuratively and literally. Honestly, it's not that big of a deal. I still love it. I think it's beautiful. But this might be something that might be a fatal flaw to some of you and might be enough to stop you from buying this. Now there's another piece that looks almost identical to this but has a second little triangle that comes out in a wedge shape, comes to a point down here, and is another triangle to make these a triangle from the top and a triangle from the side. As you can see, this is a triangle, and then it comes down and makes another triangle. And so those look significantly better back here. However, for tan ones, to get two of them from the same store, which they're only available from 15 or so stores, they're a very uncommon piece, and they are $2 each. If you want to get them from the same store, it's going to cost you $6 each, which is absolutely absurd. So I opted to get these ones that are just those pieces without the extra triangle, and they cost me 15 cents each. They look just as fine. You're never going to be looking at this area. It's acceptable to me, but I really wish that he would have you know, looked at the price of the pieces before he put it on the model. But that's not even the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that the parts list does not even include these pieces on it. So not only were they not on it, when I went to go back and buy all the pieces the parts list didn't include, these were $3 each. So it was absolutely absurd. This whole area is fine just having those two pieces. So I'm going to move the arms out of the way and we're gonna get to the biggest problem with this design. That is the thigh, because it is so incredibly thin. It is the same thickness, actually not even the same thickness, as the forearm of this character, which is one plate thick plus an extra plate on the side. This is just a single plate thick. Honestly, the colors aren't good either. We have dark gray, black, and dark tan. It just doesn't go very good together, and it kind of looks like it was an afterthought. I've definitely noticed on display, they do look a little thin and shaky and not really in scale with the rest of the fig. He's a very cool looking, very menacing cyborg and then and they just look like he's so weak in this specific area. And then you go down to his calves and his shins and they're absolutely chonked up beautifulness and it just doesn't look great. So I don't know how much I like that. I kind of wish that there was a little bit more going on there, but it's not the worst. It's just not the best. This is connected not with anything up here. This is just for looks. It is only this one skinny little round brick, and that is only connected with two axles on both sides. So if you put really any sort of effort or you're moving it around and it'll just pop right off. And over time, it'll start falling off and then you touch it and it falls off because it's only connected with that one brick, which is a not very secure connection. But you're supposed to have this thing on a display stand on a display shelf. So that shouldn't be a problem for you. Um, it's not a big deal to me at all. So I'm not really worried about that, be especially because of the absolute beautiful posing you get from this. He's a cyborg, so I'd assume that he would be very flexible, and I think that this captures that really well. So the hip can come outwards, and that's a pretty decent angle. 
I'm honestly pretty impressed with that. And you can put the shoulder armor up here. I think it looks pretty great. It can also go inwards all the way. There's some peat, there's the sand blocking it, but it can go even farther than that if you really wanted it to. It can come up, rotate in. He could sit cross-legged. It can go back. Rotate out, rotate in. Honestly, just great motion, as you can see. It can do a lot. And as you can see by this one falling off, it's not meant to be shook around and moved like that, but it definitely can be, and that's what's so cool. Once you find a pose, I suggest leaving it like that, and it can be perfectly secure on your shelf. You don't have to worry about it just falling off. If you don't touch it, it won't fall off. It's pretty secure. I like displaying him in a little bit of a running pose, and to accomplish that, we actually have hinges on the knee. These are just hinge plates, as you can see, and so they can hinge all the way straight. I wish they could hinge a little bit farther back. They can only do the 90 degree angle, but honestly, I don't know why you'd be dis displaying it at a stronger angle than that. I display him in a running position and his angle doesn't even reach 90 degrees. His calf is absolutely beautiful. I love this bionicle piece used here. It gives it the appearance of very thick, very mechanically muscly, and I think it looks really cool. It's got this strange connection here, which is illegally using a, a claw piece with a bar holding a garage door. As you can see, this is one of the garage door links, and it's holding that, and then it comes down to a steeper angle into these Technic pieces. So it's kind of putting a little bit of stress on that. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's not enough to break the piece. Uh, but it definitely is an illegal building technique, but I think it looks really cool because when you look at it from the front You see this super cool taper that I think just looks absolutely beautiful I love how it comes down towards the ankle and I wish that the thighs match that that's my problem because these look so good down here um, We see two points of articulation. Of course, we know there's just one But those are the two gears that he'd have on his legs and then his ankle can move 90 degrees and then all the way back down straight and he can actually move his foot securely on a ball joint so that you can get really any pose you'd like with that, which I think is really cool. Um, it can even go that far back that it looks like it's ready to grip onto any uneven texture. I think it looks really cool. I'm really happy with that. So that's one of the better aspects of this to me. I really like how it's got so much articulation that you can put it in just really cool poses. The parts list reflects getting these claws with the knuckles and the instructions only use these ones with the curve. So if you look up here, you can see the chest use the ones with the curve and no knuckle, and then the instructions say, so do the toes. However, the parts list tells you to get the ones with the knuckle. So I looked at his actual physical model and he did put the knuckles in the front. And so that's how I put it. And I think it looks great. I, I It's just a small error in the instructions and it's no big deal. But just be aware of that when you are building this. Just remember, put the ones with the knuckles on the front. There are four of them. It's also using axe, minifigure axe accessory pieces as the side claws, which I think looks super cool. If you get bored of one pose, you can easily put it in another and it'll hold that and you can basically do that however many times you want. I just love how poseable it actually is. And I love putting it in different stances. I think my favorite that I found has to be this walking stance. It looks very animated. I also have to talk about the stand, which obviously is not like his. His is a basically light gray triangle and the stick that comes up and holds him up, which is actually built directly into his body is light gray as well. But I think black just looks so much better. I also haven't decided fully on what stand I want to make yet, but I am kind of liking this round stand. It's not fully built. It's not tiled off. I just want to show off this, and I think that it is simple enough that it isn't distracting. The Martin Lego design stand is decent. I just would prefer black. I think it looks a lot better, and it's less distracting from a tan and gray character. Black kind of hides itself a lot better than gray does. So there's actually something that I've been wanting to do with this model that I haven't got around to doing yet, and so I thought I'd take you guys along with me and that's to see if I can actually get it to stand up on its own. Now, I love this model, but I don't really like the display stand. It kind of does take a little bit away from it, having this bar come up the middle. It just is a little bit distracting. It's not horrible. If you see any other statues like, like Sideshow Collectibles, they also have something to hold and secure the character. So having the bar isn't the worst thing, but I did kind of want to test and see if it could actually stand by itself. 
And as you saw with the weak connection connections, I'm not fully confident in it, but we could try that out right now. Let's take it off the stand. All right, so it looks like he's definitely wanting to bend these knees joints especially. He's wanting to stand up, but he's definitely not secure. It looks like he can almost stand up. He's just a little bit too weak in those joints to hold himself up. And I don't know what else the designer could have done differently without taking away a lot from the appearance because I do really like how simple and thin the actual joints of the knee look. I think that that looks pretty good. Um, I don't know what else the designer could have done besides up here in the hips to strengthen this whole area because I do think that this does look pretty cool being able to stand on its own, but having the stand is no big deal. I think it honestly looks perfectly fine. So I'm gonna put him back on that before something majorly breaks. So if you did actually decide to build this, I definitely suggest making sure that the parts list lines up with the instructions, making sure that everything's in there correctly, making sure they're in the correct colors. I did end up getting some silver of these uh, piece, these round bricks instead of dark uh, pearl gray, which is fine. It didn't really turn out that badly, thankfully, but I would suggest making sure just everything's right because there were a few mistakes. I don't know how much of that's the fault of the actual instructions and design, or if it's just something that happened that was, you know, something that was inevitably going to happen that he couldn't really control, but it's not that big of a deal. Just catch it before you actually buy the parts. The quality of the building instructions is incredible. It looks like he spent hours and hours designing this and designing those instructions. I'm very impressed by them. Some of the best rebrickable building instructions I've got. Um, other than that, what else about this model? I don't know, I, I think it's a great model. Oh, the leg's falling off, so I'm gonna put it down before something bad happens. I definitely think it's a step ahead of the actual buildable figures, and it's a really, really cool display piece. I think this looks beautiful. This is something that I really wanted, and I was actually surprised at how cheap it is. The head's only about a dollar fifty, and so it's honestly not that many parts, not that much to put together. I would recommend skipping out on his stand and building your own because you can build your own for like three or four dollars and save all those parts. So I'd recommend buying the instructions before you buy all the parts off of Bricklink and then making sure that your parts list re uh, reflects what you decide to do. Beautiful model, absolutely genius creator. I'm going to link his rebrickable model and Instagram in the description. If you are interested in buying parts for it, I'll link my Bricklink store and I can get your parts out pretty quick for this guy. So if you see anything in there, I know I have probably about half the pieces you'll need for this. So if you do see anything you want, um, or you just wanna go check out my store and support me there, that would be awesome. Even with the faults it has, I think it's still absolutely incredible. So I definitely recommend it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Say bye.